It's the Daily Talk Show, episode 429. Emmy Lou is in the building. Yeah. What a killer number. I know. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah. You've got to fucking type it in. Thank so, you. Uh, <laughs> Emmy Lou, we've got you on to talk extensively about skydiving for the next hour. <laughs> oh, God. It's um, been a while since I've done that. So, no. can we. I was, just, I was just telling the boys that you used to skydive. Yes, yes. I used to skydive a lot. I mean, when I first met you, that's what I found out. And I was like, oh, she's crazy. <laughs> Like, to, for, I mean, I skydive strapped to some poor bastard, mm. but you were doing it solo back in the day, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it takes, it takes a little while to get to that solo yeah. point. But, yeah, my first skydive was, was on my own. I had two instructors holding on to my own rig, though. Yeah. So it's, okay. you, know, you do a course and you get your A licence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all awesome. Well, you got to have, yeah, I was going to say balls. You don't have balls. You've got to have some bollocks to yeah. do something like that. And we're not going to talk about skydiving for the next hour. That was a joke. If you... <laughs> If you actually thought they would, uh, yeah. oh, we can talk, it's your show, mate. You're wearing the hoodie. You can talk about whatever the hell you want. Uh, so people might, well, people would know you, uh, Emmy Lou loves. Like that's that's your brand. That's yeah. That's where you're uh, pushing video content. You sell your uh, like the the clothing that mm-hmm. you're that you sell is outrageous in regards to like the the cut through in like you being on the street and actually seeing people wearing it and stuff. Oh. It's absolutely mm. incredible. It's such mm. a thrill. But do you know, I, I love seeing women on the street mm-hmm. with their clothes. I actually fangirl over it. Yeah. But I think what I love the most is when I get those messages saying, hey, I, I wore your dress or I wore your jacket to a party. Mm-hmm. Someone else actually was wearing it too. She came up. We were so excited. We got photos. We got chatting. And, you know, not often you hear about women being excited about twinning, you know, in <laughs> yeah, the same yeah. outfit, yeah, whereas yeah. It, it is just a phenomenon. They absolutely love it. Or the other thing is, Someone will recognise them. Mm. Is that an Emmy Lou Loves hoodie? Mm. Yep. And then they start chatting. Like, check out chicks, the whole lot. It's, it's just so amazing. And it's creating this community and starting conversations and connections that would never have happened. What about if you're with your bestie and they've you, you rock up and you're wearing the same thing? Is that still annoying or is that, I mean, is, is, or is it just your clothing that it's actually a win? So then you've turned something that was once annoying into a win. Well, I've never found it annoying at all. Yeah. And uh, and I know some people might, but I think that's mm. just that maybe, you know, they're feeling a little bit insecure or whatever mm-hmm. at the time. But it's definitely a win when it comes mm. to, to my clothes. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, you, I've been trying to get him out of that. <laughs> yeah, I well, you guys twinning, you tell me. Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, are I'm you pissed. annoyed? I'm pissed. <laughs> Who I'm had real the backwards hat on first? Uh, today. You did today. I'm going to tell no, you. No, that's right. no, you can keep it. That's okay, fine. Keep it on. No, it looks good. Don't. You okay. mess up the hair and shit. Just leave it. You t- uh, on your website, you talk about your tribe. Mm-hmm. How important has that been as part of the everything that you're doing? The community and the tribe mm-hmm. are the key mm-hmm. to everything. Um, and, and, and that doesn't just mean uh, the, the cut through and, and maybe the success that you see or you, you measure with what I'm doing, yeah. um, the tribe is everything to them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Th- they are feeling a part of something. And mm. that's, you know, I'm obsessed with my phone. I've got two phones, you know, I've got a burner phone, a normal <laughs> phone. You know, I'm obsessed with it. I'm on my phone all the time. I love it. Are okay? they different phones? Do you have Android and iPhone or are they no, two no, iPhones? Two, two iPhones? Come on, who are? No, they're iPhones. <laughs> Jesus, don't two ever talk that shit. Are you running the same <laughs> Apple account on both <laughs> or two Apple accounts? No, I've got two different numbers. I, I try and do the same apps on both. Yeah. That's, no, a, that's a lot shit. of work. And so do you, I mean, because I like this idea. Yeah. Like I, you well, don't need two look, phones. Right? No, <laughs> look, I want two I, phones. I know I sound gangster right now, but the reality is one's just so my kids can watch YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you had two phones I, at once because to, you got well, into a plan I went into the, was a good deal. I went to a, like an Optus plan or whatever and then it was the service was annoying me and then I wanted a new phone. I ended that phone. So before you know it, mm. I had two phones. You got but, upsold. But the thing was that I wasn't using it. I was never... I never had them at the same time and was like bang, yeah. bang. Well, what's happened is I should have probably said, okay, this is my personal phone mm-hmm. and then this is mm-hmm. my business phone, but I didn't. I just started calling people from all these different <laughs> – now everyone's got both phones. I can't live without both of them. <laughs> There's no rhyme or reason. There's literally no logic behind them. But what I was getting at was that I love my phone. I'm addicted to my phone. Mm-hmm. love it. But – the more we sort of delve into our phones, the more we use it, the more we use social media, we actually miss and yearn human connection, right? Mm. And that's mm. the thing, we're going back to the community and the tribe. That's been the amazing thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Is that we are all feeling connected and we're coming out to these events and I'm encouraging them mm. to get out or I'm, an encourage, I'm encouraging them to say, hey, oh, my God, is that Emmy Lou Loves mm. Hoodie? You know, that takes a lot of balls for some people to say that. Yeah, definitely. It doesn't always happen. Yeah. I, I had a, a guy... Um, he was at a DFO and he was serving coffee to, to somebody and had said, you're wearing the Emmylou Loves, now a, a male, like saying, you know, mm. you're wearing the Emmylou Loves jumpsuit. Mm. You look amazing in it. But just at that 
lady was so wrapped. Yeah. And so was the guy. Do you know what I mean? And they both messaged me the separate stories. They didn't realise. And they were just wanting to say, hey, you know, this happened to, to me today and I felt amazing. Yeah. I think if, if Tommy and if this happened to Tommy and I, we're, we're a couple of narcissists already. I don't know if we'd cope. I think it'd be too much. I think my ears would be ringing and I'd have tears in my eyes. What, what's wrong with being a narcissist? <laughs> we all need a little bit of it. When, when I first met you, Emmy, um, Emmy Lou, through a mutual friend, Charlotte, um, I remember her telling me, she's like, you've got to look at Emmy Lou's Insta. It's, I can't stop looking at the stories. <laughs> and she's like, I'm addicted. She's going to be the next big thing. Oh, my she, God, did you really she, say she that? She really said that to me. Wow. And, and so then I got on the Emmy Lou Insta story bandwagon. I mean, you've been doing the Gary V 100 pieces of content a day <laughs> for the last two, uh, year and a half, I reckon. How many pieces? Three. How three many? Years. How many pieces of content are you putting out a day? Like if you were to uh, cut up the story, I know you yeah. probably film a long story and then whack it in. Yeah. No, you know, I don't actually measure in terms of how much content. It's mm. it's actually just what's going on in my life. So, you know, if I'm cooking for a party and there are four or five recipes that I'm going to do or mm. I'm actually cooking for my kid's birthday party, they're all going to land on there if I've filmed it, you yeah. know, if my kid wants to film me mm. doing it, you know, or whatever. So it really, it's not about how much I'm doing a day. It's just what's going on in my life. And if we can get that up on there, because it's very important to me. It's kind of real life. We don't go, oh, this would make some great content. Yeah. Let's film that. Let's get you over there. You know, it's very much like, hey, let's go. Mm. Hey, I'm about to walk out the door. Can you press record? Thanks. Let's get I, this on I mean, there. cooking for your kids, it make, you make it look like it's a full-blown dinner party. Yeah. I wish I had you cooking for, for my kids and <laughs> my, me being on the receipt. Come over any time because, you know, they don't eat it. So um, <laughs> kids, they're the best. Uh, have shits. you not heard Vita? She'll she'll watch me on a live. She'll be on the other side of the phone, and all you'll hear is my little four year old's voice. That's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking Portuguese chicken. You know, I'm like, just gone absolutely nuts. You know, there's hundreds of people in the live. Oh my god, yeah, this is yeah. amazing. Are you gonna post a recipe? And then you've got yeah. that's disgusting. What, yeah. what do your kids like? like? What do they like to eat? Rice bubbles. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, like, like every kid. Chicken nuggets. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I don't even think they'll eat chicken. Yeah, I mean, but they do eat it. Yeah. But they do that weird thing where they'll eat it once. I remember yeah. I made the mac and cheese. They loved it. Yeah. So then I made a double batch the next week. Yeah, no, I got mm, you. Mm, mm. Didn't touch it. It was exactly yeah. the same. They're on to you. Mac and yeah, cheese, that's weird. very upsetting because it, it mac is, and cheese it? like is. fucking yeah. mac and cheese. Yeah. Eat it. Um, they st- don't know what's good, do they? <laughs> Starting anywhere, like Josh and I were talking about lives and be doing a live and you, you've, you've, I mean, I think, live event. Is that what you're talking uh, about? No, doing an Insta oh, live. live sorry. Yeah. yeah. I, I think, it, I think you started doing, I mean, I saw more Insta lives from you than anyone I'd ever followed. Right. Yeah. And so it's like you jumped onto that. But the thing about an Insta live, when you've got one person, Josh called it, it's just a FaceTime call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There was a moment where I was watching a live the other day and I just popped in and it said one. And I was like, fuck, I can't leave now. Cause I feel too guilty. <laughs> You're on a FaceTime. But, but what was that like starting? Because everyone starts with one person. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. You know, I think I started, I think I had a, maybe a thousand followers at the time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for me, it was really about practicing. And I remember saying that, hey, I'm going live tonight. We've got six weeks to go before I'm going to host my first event. So I'm going live every single Wednesday, Mm -hmm. late night lives. We're going to talk about shit. We're just going to get it done. Mm -hmm. And it was really about showing up. And then from there, you you start to practice the sort of act of selflessness. It, it really doesn't matter how many people are there. Mm. It really mm. doesn't. Yeah. Because what you're saying is gold. If you truly believe in what you're saying, and it doesn't matter if you're talking about a Portuguese chicken <laughs> or if you're talking about <laughs> life or, or relationships or whatever, you know, those two people, that one person, they mean just as much as 500 people, yeah. 600 people. And so the passion has never left and and the passion was always there. And I think that's why it became it's become such a – um, important part of who I am mm. and, and also it's so important to the fans as well and to the community. Hey, when are you going to jump on and do a live? They love that. Yeah. It's real life. Does having a bigger audience change the type of content, do you think, that you make? No, n- no not for me it doesn't. Mm-hmm. I, I understand how that can change. Uh, for me it's, you know, because I've sort of tried to sit as much as I can in that driver's seat uh, with regards to being the executive producer on the TV show, like, you know, mm. making sure that I'm creating merchandise so that I don't have to dilute, you know, my socials um, with, you know, stuff that doesn't align. Uh, so for me the growth, uh, it hasn't changed at all. The only thing is that my 
thumb gets really sore because the <laughs> DMs go crazy. Mm-hmm. I've always had a lot of DMs. I, I've always had a lot of engagement mm-hmm. and I've always been quite available to that. And right now, you know, I'm trying to work out how can we sustain that because literally replying. So say I get around three to 400 DMs a day, I'll reply to around 150 to 200 a day. Boys, take note. How, yeah, how, We were crumbling at six the other day. <laughs> yeah. and, oh. It's full on, you know, and, then, and, and they're very short and sharp answers. We're not talking long-winded yeah, stuff yeah, here. Yeah. And, then, and I'll be quite brutal and go, hey, mate, um, I can't, you know, I can't give you that recipe right now. It's, I literally just cooked it. It's mm-hmm. up on stories. Press yeah. rewind. Go watch it. Or, you know, because yeah. there's a lot of that as well. Can yeah. you let me know the recipe? Can you let me know the shoes? You're actually replying to the story where the shoes are tagged. Mm. Um, <laughs> but, you know, and you just let them know. Uh, and people are really understanding about that as well. Uh, behind the scenes, I remember you telling me when we first met it just around you wanted to do TV presenting. And I remember yeah. you, we, we've, we've spoken a couple of times. We spoke on the phone about it. What, what do you have? Like I think that's like a, a – a, a destination to land, right, which mm. gives you the inspiration to start. Yes. What about for people that feel like they've got nothing to say? You know, that I, I don't. I, I want to do what Emmy Lou does, but I don't feel like I have anything to say. Okay, so uh, take it step back. They want to do what I do in terms of presenting, or, or just uh, terms of showing up on the Insta, or yeah, Insta connecting with people, mm. creating a tribe. But then they're sort of feeling that crippled because I, I, I'm in a bit of a similar situation to you. I started wanting to be a presenter, mm-hmm. which I, I wasn't end up wasn't where I want, ended up landing. I ended up doing radio and stuff like that, but it gave me a reason to start. Yeah. And even though I felt like sometimes I don't have anything to say, I had this mechanism which is mm. like try and be a TV presenter, you know, do some scripts and mm. create little stories. So it actually got me to finding that creative thing that I love. Almost and, finding that purpose. Exactly. Yeah. But for, I think a lot of people get crippled by I've got nothing to say but I kind of want to be, you know, putting myself out there. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think it's kind of similar to – Fucking hard question, actually, Tommy. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> just so start off by saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Um, <laughs> I mean, it just it's you a can. Friday <laughs> afternoon, mate. <laughs> well, uh, did you maybe just make it make it for yourself? Did no, you? Yeah, I think with goal setting, it, work backwards. Okay, so so mm. you, realistically, you've got nothing to say, mm. you know, but you want to be out there saying mm. it. Work backwards from that. Why do you want to be out there yeah. saying it? What's that first? What does that mean to you? Why is that? And then, you know, maybe there's something that's driven you. Maybe it's just a childhood dream. Maybe there's something that you're trying to prove to someone in particular. And that, mm. that takes brutal honesty, right? But you've got to kind of work backwards from there and go, okay, why am I doing that first? And why does it mean so much to me? So really um, teasing out those particular whys first, then maybe somewhere in there you're going to start to land on a particular purpose or a particular reason. Mm. And then again you tease out that reason. Well, why did I want to prove myself? To, to my mum, my dad, my ex-boyfriend, why, why does that mean so much to me? Again, tease it out again, mm. work backwards from that. You know, you're talking about starting from scratch there. So mm. that's going to take a little bit of unpacking. And the thing with that is uh, I just don't think you need to be afraid of that. Don't be afraid to unpack that shit and don't be afraid if you don't come up with the answers straight away. No yeah. one fucking knows this shit. We're not the Dalai <laughs> yeah. Lama. Does, you know what does I mean? the why change? Fucking does the why change? Is the, the why, why fucking changes every day. Yeah. Like I'm a woman. I yeah. change my shit every <laughs> single day. What was the why at the beginning and what is it now? Yeah, uh, for me, yeah. the why was definitely because I felt I could entertain, I felt I could communicate, I could mm-hmm. tell stories and I could do it in an entertaining way that people would digest. Um, th- that was definitely always the why. Like, I can do this. Mm. I don't know. I don't know particularly why. I don't know if that's what everyone else is going to think. But I know that when I do it, it makes me really happy. You know, so that was that that particular why. Yeah. Now, that did change mm. because all of a sudden I started to see something, you know, inspiration in people and and the connection with people and the fact that there was that related relatability, I guess. But then it changed again because – uh, and I think that this is really important. You could go one way and you could go, fuck, I'm inspirational, man. Yeah, you know, yeah. like right, people are inspired by me. No, they're actually not. Yeah. They're inspired by themselves. They're mm-hmm. inspired by what they see in you that reflects back to them. Now that shit is the cool stuff. Yeah. And that's the stuff mm-hmm. that now I feel more driven to to remind people, hey, I'm not the inspiring one here. You are. Yeah. You can see it. Yeah. Inspired people get inspired. Well, Do, people, does that make sense? People yeah. Don't change people. People change exactly. themselves. Yeah. Right? And, and that's what I want, want to remind people. I'm just here like a little beacon, like, you know, a little cheerleader for you, but it, but it's actually you that is going to do the work. And it's so sustainable looking at it that way, right? Because otherwise, yeah. if you do it the other way, if it's you, 
It's too much fucking pressure. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm, I, I, you know, and I don't want that for yeah. them. Yeah. You know, because at any time, Instagram could be gone. Mm. If I'm, if I'm gone, what, what you, what have you got left? You've got to really see in yourself what ignites you to get going and get motivated. Might be only one little thing, and that's okay. You just build on that. Yeah, I mean, so your uh, Emmy Lou loves is on. Uh, community TV as well as on YouTube, is that right? Yeah, so it's on community TV mm-hmm. and it's on YouTube and Facebook, but as of uh, the last couple of weeks, it's on Channel 10 Peach. Oh, amazing. Oh, oh wicked. Go. That's so yeah, good. So Peach. Cha- Channel it's Peach. Peach it's is what, fucking cool, man. Yeah. Like, that's oh. where all the cool shows are. Yeah. Yeah, it's <laughs> like getting a TV soon, guys. I he literally doesn't have a TV. I haven't had a TV, TV for three years. Four years. Oh, my God. Yeah. But, I mean, that's, I guess the, the interesting thing is about the, the, your approach is I remember working on community TV years and years and years ago. And what I love about what you've done is you're not necessarily a school of the community TV industry. That's just a platform for you to do what you yeah. do great. Mm. But you'll put it anywhere. And I think that yeah. that's the key is some people will watch it on YouTube. Other people are consuming it on Facebook. And I even find I'm interchanging between wherever I am. I'm like, oh, like the, on a Sunday night, I'll see on like an Insta story. Yep. Uh, Emmy Lou loves is, you know, on YouTube or whatever. And I switch onto that. Yeah. So it, it's that dual viewing behavior. Mm. And we all have it. I mean, mm. like I nowadays, I put on a movie just to purely scroll on my phone. It's like, oh, <laughs> what do I feel like watching today? Oh, you know, I'll put on like Town with Ben, ben Affleck. Or I love Heat. I love yeah. Michael Mann movies, like really dark machine. Like, really, really <laughs> fun. And I love it blaring while I'm just quietly scrolling Pinterest. It's so true, you know? is it? <laughs> well, I was doing that the other night. Uh, Bree and I were watching The Bachelor. Uh, but the annoying thing is. We that, know, mate. Yeah. <laughs> but I, but <laughs> that, I that horrible content. Yeah, no, I'm sorry about that. But the thing is. <laughs> Where I was seeing that fall apart was Brie was actually consuming it and I've just got Instagram videos on full volume. It yeah. dri- drives her absolutely yeah. mad. Yeah, I use the, Airpo- the AirPods, yeah. I mean. Yeah, left selfish. Yeah. <laughs> Think about your partner, mate. And, and so the um, uh, with when it comes to product and content, do you see content as something that we should be monetizing or do we need to make money off content or is that really just a mechanism to sell a product? Oh, goodness. Uh, You know what? I think it really depends on who you are and what your brand is Mm. and who your audience is. Mm. That's what we need to really be listening to. What does your audience actually want? How do they digest you and your content, all the products that you're selling or or whatever it is? Mm. So, you know, you don't have to make any excuses about what you're doing out there to make a living at all. You just have to be really, again, coming back to that brutal honesty about are you doing it with your audience in mind? Because I know, you know, for the last three, three years I've held out on a lot of stuff because mm. the, the first person that comes to my mind, like obviously there's my family, but it's my community. Mm. What do they need? So, you know, when someone offers me a heap of product, I'm like, we're going to deck you out, mm. you know, with all of your, your stuff. And it's mm. like, uh, how's that going to help my community? Yeah. How, how, how is me, you know, rocking around in the best kitchen, whatever, how's that going to help them? Does it fuck with the brands? Are they like a bit flawed by, by it? Yeah, you know, it's been a lonely little time, but they're, they're cotton and on now, like, <laughs> you know. Um, and, and the thing is, it, that was okay that I, mm. you know, at no point do I take offence to that because they're just doing, again, what's best for them and what they think their audience yeah, wants. Yeah, of course. So, so we're really, you know, you're making sure you're aligning with what, what you're getting back yeah. from your community. Well, well, saying no, a lot of people have fear of saying no because they think that then they won't have another opportunity. Yeah, and you mm. got to be re- – like that's the thing. you got to throw it all away. You know, mm. it's it's like skydiving, right? You exit that aircraft and you are all in. Mm-hmm. And and for me, that that's how it is with, with Emmy Lou Love's brand. It's like, well, you know what? And, and I had um, – you know, my parents questioned me, Jesus, when are you going to make money out of this, Lou? You, you know, like – and it, was, it really got to that real sticky end. I remember last year, sort of mid last year, around this time last year, I had that awkward phone call, you know, mm-hmm. uh, from, from my parents. It's going well, but Jesus, Lou, like, come on. And it's like, no, you know, because I, I, I know what we're doing here. How this did you take here. it? I mean, yeah, how do you take it? Because I guess that um, there's a lot of awesome, amazing things out there that don't make cash. Mm. Did you always know that there was going to be uh, nah. even not even ca- I guess like what people might miss with all of this is like, it's not even a fuck ton of money. I guess you probably just want to keep d- sustaining and being able to do yeah, what you do and feed your family. Yeah, for me, I wanted to sustain the, the TV show. Mm-hmm. So so that's where my, um, I, I guess, the way that I approached when, when I got approached for maybe sponsored content and stuff like that. You know, at first it's like, oh, wow, mm-hmm. someone, you know, values my my community and values my voice. Um, you know, only took probably, I think, two posts to realise, no, they don't care at all. 
Like, mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? And I, I really realised that I wanted to organise a meetup uh, because I'd done this sponsored content. I thought this is what it was all about. Hey, you know, my community wants me. They didn't care about this. Mm. The post had gone out. We're done. Uh-huh. I was like, oh, okay, is this how it works? And so that's where it, it literally only took two. And then I was like, okay, you want to be a part of this then there's the TV show, there's my projects that need to be funded and the, we need a full 360-degree uh, view of how, uh, you know, my audience works. Mm. So you want to come on board with Emmy Lou Loves and my community, then we need to have it all going all at once. And I won't chart, like, uh, you know, I won't make a lot of money out mm-hmm. of this. I don't care because yeah. it, it's what I want and it really stuck to that. And I think that's where the merchandise started to come on board because I was like, okay, that can sustain me and that can be something that, um, is sold but not sold uh, with that obligation to my audience to buy. Mm-hmm. You know, you want a dress, you buy it. You won't buy it because it's like, oh, I feel bad. I better get it for her. Mm-hmm. She's, you know, like she's, it's not like that. It's yeah. If you like the dress, you'll buy it. And, you know, as women, we're ruthless. We like it, we'll get it yeah. and we'll sell our firstborn for it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, <laughs> it, 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 and, and, and it felt like a nice way to be able to do it and sustain the other creative projects and all the content that I mm. love to push out every single day. And is that is it about saying, okay, these are the things, I'm drawing a circle around this, this is what's going to be free always? Do you think about it that way or? Uh, no, no, no. Yeah. Actually, to be honest, yeah. no, I, I, I don't think about what's going to be free and what's going to be paid. Mm-hmm. I really just take every opportunity and go, okay, what does this look like? Entertainment-wise, what yeah. does it look like? Um, Community-wise, how does it sit? You know, and then most importantly, how does it align with me? Do I enjoy it? Do I yeah. love the product? You know, I think with with um, Vu, who is our one of our you know sponsors for the for the show, like it took me twelve weeks. Like I, I used their product for yeah. twelve weeks, you know, and then and looked around and and you know made fun of it being on the bottom shelf and mm. um, dusted it off. And and you know <laughs> they actually bring that up because they you know and said, God, we saw that someone showed us that, yeah. and we're like, we've got to get this girl. <laughs> Totally bagging our product, but absolutely <laughs> loving it. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. It's it's um it's real. I think you put out so much content, and I feel like you share a lot. Is there anything you don't share? Uh, I think the one thing I don't share, and people don't, uh, I don't think they pick up on it, mm. is um I don't actually share a lot of the kids. So the kids are there. You yeah. know, I've got kids mm-hmm. screaming in the background. But when I am playing with them, hanging out with them doing stuff, you don't actually see any of that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, you know, because I'm actually doing it. So that that's my time. Mm. Uh, apart from that, I'll just share whenever the whenever I feel like I, I want to and if I've got time. Have you pulled back on anything? Like you you shared a little bit more and then you've pulled back. I know you've shared about um, your, your, your partner yeah. and the relationship. Yeah, yeah. Um, the only time I'll pull back is if we're right in the middle, uh, right amongst it. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Because no one can figure out their shit when they're right in the <laughs> yeah, middle of yeah, it. You yeah, can't yeah. dig your way no, out yeah. of that. But once you're out of it, you can say, Jesus, I was standing in a pile of oh. shit. That was I mean, fucked. a breakup like, you know. on Insta Live would be pretty, I'd, I'd watch it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> From well, the outside, imagine that. that. I mean, the thing is that if, if we're uh, feeling revved up about about something, you don't go and no. have the conversation straight away. Yeah. Let alone creating fucking content for an audience. No, and, and I think that's where it comes back to that selflessness as well. Yeah. You don't get on and have a rant. You yeah. go and have a think about it. You know, mm. you actually live through that experience first. And if there is something that you've learnt about it, mm. you can share that. Yeah. You don't have to share the whole story. And the other thing that, uh, you know, I, do, I try not to share any stories that aren't about me as such. Mm. You, know, you know, I make sure that they're re- like they're actually my stories to share. Mm. And the... um. The authenticity piece, is there a separation between you as a person and what you're sharing from a content point of view? Mm, like as in a personality type? Well, yeah. So the reason I think about it is because if you're giving your all and yourself all the time, mm. there's um, you're removing all barriers, which means it can be super awesome, but it means that things like external forces – like an audience disagreeing with something mm. could actually really hurt. Is there mechanism so that you make sure that that energy that you're putting in mm. is to good use and it doesn't actually reflect on you negatively? God, I'd like to say that, mm. you know, that happens and, and I think I'm only just getting to that point because it's just that, you know, almost like balance doesn't really exist. And, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and you don't realise that until you're out of balance. Yeah. And, and then that's when you realise, hey, I am not reserving. I, no, well, I don't have any self-preservation right mm-hmm. now. I've got nothing left in the tank. And, and and then you start to look back and go, okay, how can I change this around a little bit? How can I make sure that my family are my priority mm-hmm. and things like that? And, hey, I've gone through that stage where I've been that arsehole and they haven't been the priority. And yeah. I had to really take a look at myself. And 
I was scared too. Mm-hmm. Like, shit, is it too late? You know, my, my, my oldest is eight years old. I'm like, I fucked it. He's mm-hmm. gone. You know, and, and but it's never too yeah, late, yeah. right? And, and it, it was only, it was probably like a really intense six-month period where there was a, a sort of a big growth but then also that stress of like there was a growth in the profile, maybe not a growth in finances and, and how that was working mm-hmm. as a business. Yeah. And I was really stretched and, oh, mate, did the family feel it? And, and then when I came out of that, again, when I was on the outside of that, I was like, Jesus, if I don't do something soon, yeah. these kids are going to think that they're not my number one priority mm. when really, ultimately, I want to do everything for them. And so that had to really, really shift. And it had to, I, I mean, I don't think it changed on who I am on socials. I don't think it changes, uh, you know, who I um, push out, mm. like in terms of content, because that's just me. You're never going to change me. I'm just mm. who I am. Mm-hmm. Um, whether you've got a phone or a camera in my face, it's the same. I probably just swear a little less when there's a, like a. a when, when the camera's there. When the camera, I do, I swear. I swear I mean, just a tad less. It's, yeah. it's awareness, right? And sometimes you have to push those boundaries to even understand the awareness for mm. something. Yeah. You know, so that thing happening, what was the moment, say, if, you know, the thing with kids and priority? Mm. What's the moment? Is that like a, you know, a, oh God. I think. Uh, You know, and people do have breakthrough moments. Mm -hmm. I I can't say I've had, I don't get full breakthroughs. I get these mini ones, these mini little like pokes. And I'm like, oh, that's uncomfortable. Uh, But you kind of ignore it as well. And because you're still busy, Mm -hmm. you're still Mm -hmm. driven and you're still in, you know, a bit of an asshole mood or mode, should I say, not not mood. So you're still kind of driven and you think, no, no, keep going, keep going. And then all of a sudden they start to stack up. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, fuck, that's not a poke, that's sore. You know, Mm -hmm. and you realise, okay, that's been hitting at me for the last six months and I haven't seen it. And then I think there was, you know, one particular thing where I was kind of scared to come home. I was uh, not scared to come home, but I felt flat coming home because I felt like that my family hadn't missed me while I was away Mm -hmm. and that I actually was better off out doing stuff. And that's when I realised, no, 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 Mm -hmm. mate, no kid I know you know, doesn't miss their mum. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Well, like they're you... following it on Instagram as well, so they say <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> take a lot of it. <laughs> no, no, they, they know you're it. in the car at the front. <laughs> <laughs> Eating the Hungry Jacks. <laughs> they want some Hungry Jacks. Throw they're pissed. The and throw it out the toy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no. I would never do that. I don't litter. <laughs> <laughs> you went to um, Mecca Island? Necker. 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 Yeah. It is the Mecca. At oh. Necker. Mm-hmm. How did you get to go to Necker Island? So that's that's Richard Branson's yeah. island? Yeah, it? it is Richard Branson's Arby's. island. So um, it was part of a leadership program uh, for business chicks. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. What's yeah. it like there? Uh, you know what? It took two days of full-on travel to get there. So really? for four days that I was there, I felt like oh, <laughs> I'd just come out of a revolver. Really? Um, like, you know, <laughs> I've been on a two-day bender. Yeah. Um, so it was it, it was fantastic. Yeah. It was a tropical island. Obviously, Richard Brant's there. It's quite surreal. Um, I must admit it was one of those ones where I didn't feel 100% comfortable. Mm-hmm. You know, you're on a really rich man's island. Mm-hmm. He is awesome and but it, it it rocked me. It, it, it kind of rocked me and, and I couldn't work out, okay, why am I here? What am I doing? I knew yeah. I was interviewing him, of yeah. course, um, but it, it yeah. It, was it, it imposter syndrome or Yeah, what was it? you know what? I'd never had that before, mm. uh, but I did wonder, is this what this imposter syndrome yeah. is all about? Um, it's not that I didn't feel I didn't deserve to be there. Um, you know, you pay money to, to be there and mm. be part of the program. I did feel, however, that I had put a lot of high hopes on that interview with Richard. So I felt, you know, I've put a lot of high hopes on that. I'm going to interview Richard Branson. Boom, my profile is going to go crazy. Mm. And you know what happened afterwards? I was so angry at myself. Yeah. Um, the interview was amazing. He was fantastic. All went well. But then I thought, why the fuck would you put your own personal value and how well you can do in mm. your life on the person that you're interviewing? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, absolutely. no, you're going good. You're going great guns as it is. And that's 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 where I did feel very uncomfortable and a little disappointed in myself. Like why mm. would you do that and set this standard for yourself mm. that um, enabling someone else to dictate where you're going to go? Do you think like, that your community cared about it as much as you cared? Uh, about the interview yeah. as such? Like were you looking at from a community? I wonder because I guess um, you're someone who cares so much about their tribe and their yeah. community it sounds like maybe part of the disconnect was it was a moment of the self yeah, and that rather yeah, and, than and, and, community. And, you know, oh, this is going to really ignite. Like, 
What's he going to do? Do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. I wasn't even allowed to have audio on it. I do nothing. <laughs> like, do you say no audio no, on an interview? Like a photo. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> like, it was, you know, but at the same time there was obvious amazing learnings mm. and also that that sort of self-confidence confidence. I can interview Richard Branson and mm. do all right, you know. Um, and it was a very intimate environment, which you guys know, that's almost harder to do, uh, mm. those those types of interviews when you're just in front of like 25 people in his lounge room, Alyssa Milano's over there, you got Mark Manson. You know, it's yeah. it's pretty crazy, right? Um, and I did really well. And he came up even the next day and he was like, you did really well. I really enjoyed that. You know, I had him laughing and didn't take it all too seriously. I mean, he was talking about launching into space, for God's sake. Yeah. <laughs> but confidence is contagious. Yeah. <laughs> did you bring that? Did yeah. You? I mean, was he feeling that? I mean, I think you've got an energy about you and that's what, and that's you, right? So you're just amplifying yourself. You be you and that's when you've got a chance to connect and yeah. he probably connected with it's you. Exactly, yeah. And 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 also it didn't matter, it doesn't matter, just like we were talking about the live, mm. it doesn't matter if there's one person or 800 people, right? That mm. Everyone has that right to connect. So it doesn't matter if I'm interviewing Richard Branson or, or you know, mm. someone that's just from down the street. It doesn't matter. Mm, yeah, exactly. You know, you're you bring still the same energy. Exactly. And, yeah, yeah. Always, always. So this time last year, you're on the phone to your parents. How did you? How did you take that call? Did you hang up? No, <laughs> no, no. I, you know, again, I think it's really important not to be driven by the ego because if you were driven by the ego of it, you'd be like, oh. God, you know, they're putting me down, they don't mm. believe in me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, straight away that's the first thing that people always say, yeah. they don't believe in me. Mm-hmm. No, mm-hmm. actually you don't believe in yourself and you're just attaching to one thing that they've said, they just care about you. Mm-hmm. They just care about you. They care about your kids. They're wanting to know are you are you stretching too much, are you burning the candles at both ends. Mm-hmm. That's all that's happening. Again, it comes back to that going backwards, like starting from the backwards. Was that so, the first thought though? Because that's pretty, uh, that's a conscious mindset to be into. Yeah, it's your parents. Like I'm yeah. 40 years old, I've been dealing with those guys for like forever, <laughs> my whole life. So for me, I was just like, it's all right, dad. I got this. Yeah. Can I borrow 10 grand? <laughs> <laughs> I need yeah, to when they're your, Island. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when they're your investors as well, you've yeah. got to. You yeah, know. it's like you've got to talk them off the ledge. It's all good. <laughs> it's that's, fine. Can we just beef that up a little? That's yeah. so great. <laughs> Yeah, and so Josh, you're saying that um, that is that takes a level of awareness in a moment to think like that. I mean, I'd be reactive. My mum said to me, "Like mm. you guys doing what you're doing, you know?" Because what she sees mm. is this. She's probably watching yeah. now. Hi, mum. But she, so I, you can't blame people around us, mm. creatives, that sort of have this outward thing that sort of entertains and informs and educates yeah. and makes someone feel happy or whatever. Because that's the product of this, but they don't need to understand. And, Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of our parents probably wouldn't understand this space because a lot of it isn't understood by us just yet, right? Exactly. It's a really weird, you know, Mm. like there's, what do you mean it's on Facebook? Is it on, (laughs) can I do it with the remote? No, you know. And so, um, you know, they've got an iPad so they can see it. And they know. And even my mum, you know, she she went out and bought an iPad because she wouldn't be able to watch it. You know, she lives in Bunbury. So... Mm. Um, and when I heard that she wanted that, I was like, oh, I'll buy you an iPad, you know. And, and so. Was um, it her 10 grand money? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The 10K loan, you get a free iPad <laughs> as part of it. Which is branded hoodie. Yeah, branded, branded From the daily talk yeah. show, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll give you a good deal on it. <laughs> and, you know, and it was really cool. So they don't need to necessarily understand it. Mm you know, all they want to do is feel proud mm, and mm. know that you're okay no matter what you're doing. Yeah. You could be bricklaying and they just mm. want to know you're safe and yeah. you're okay and you're being fed. So what about day. negativity? How do you, um, like you hear, like I feel like I was just watching online uh, the other day, someone sort of doing coaching and saying you need to cut the negativity out. You need to uh, be very across who you're surrounding yourself with. Yeah. It, oh, that's a hard one. Because negativity can mm. creep in. Oh, sorry. Um, Don't touch me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you fucking touch me. Right? <laughs> 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 they play footsies under the fucking table since my, we started. My leg up, I'm lifting my leg up. I was in an awkward position. All my fault. My fault. My fault. Sorry. I'm... <laughs> Are we good? Oh, you're gonna Are get we good? me started again. Yeah, no, sorry, <laughs> sorry, we're back. I'm back. What's the question? <laughs> the, ne- the negativity. No, no, the I'm negativity. Such, I'm fucking with you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think that's a hard one because it comes up when you least expect it. Mm. And from it can, the people that you don't you, expect it. From yeah. the people that are like sitting right there, mm. you know, sometimes yeah. and that 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 one can muck with your head. And stings. and it stings, it hurts, and it can make you angry and 
honestly, like you normally only get angry when you're hurt. Mm. Uh, you know, so when my parents say something like that, I do take it as they're caring because it's your family. Your family mm. got your back, even mm. when they're being shits. They got your back, you know. Mm. But then when, when the negativity comes in from, you know, just unlikely sources, it starts to throw you a little bit. Yeah. And that one can leave you a little bit wobbly. And then you get a couple of trolls, you know, throw a couple of people that you don't even know. Yeah. yeah. That's what kills me. The ones that you don't know yeah, yeah. who are probably sitting there, you know, like. I, I, it, I find that easier though. I find the, the, uh, the face I don't know who's a troll a lot easier than the person who I feel should know me and, yeah. and doesn't get mm. it because then it feels like, oh, well, I'm a bit out of a, like there's an alignment piece that yeah, I'm not sure Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it, it's been a bit of both. Sometimes mm. I'll have that and yeah. uh, but I can talk that out with, you know, um, with someone because y you do know them. So I can talk it out with Aaron and go, God, I wonder why they did that. And you can obviously you're assuming a lot of the yeah. time but at least you can have that discussion. But sometimes with the, with the faceless troll yeah. I'm yeah. like, oh, my God, I just want to. Firstly, beat their head <laughs> to the ground. Like I just want to lay into them, yeah, you know. Yeah. They're making fun of me and my kids or yeah. whatever. But at the same time, you you want to um you want to ask them what's the justification for that? Mm. You, you know, whereas I can kind of work out uh, when it's you know, when it's negativity mm. coming from someone you may know. You know, that's so interesting because I feel yeah. the absolute opposite. I feel like you know what, Pete, like the trolls or people who like. That's projecting the detach, like I'm yeah, detached from that. Yeah, which is the and same. Sort of I, I feel like you. Yeah. That's a much more mm. sane way to look at no, it. No, but I think that the thing is, you can at least reconcile better, uh, closer relationships. I feel like I'm way more yeah. likely to or, cut people out. Or, uh, but that, that's the thing, though. I have had to do that a lot and just mm. go. You know what? Um, what you're saying and what you're doing, yeah. I, I can really see it and recognize it, and I'm just going to back off. I don't yeah. fight with that sort of stuff because you know it's their shit. Mm -hmm. I just, I, I'm, I really just bow out. Yeah. Um, and I think that's something that you have to learn to do. Yeah. Is bow out. Doesn't always feel like you've gotten closure, but at least you're not around it. Mm. Yeah. You know? What about like transforming yourself? So we we're constantly changing. Mm. How do you deal with people who say, oh, I know the real Emmy Lou. I know you back here or then versus where you are today. How do you, um, how do you start that conversation? Well, firstly, I'd say, when do you know me? Because I was yeah. stoned for most of my 20s. <laughs> <laughs> and if you knew me then, well, fuck, not so bad. Yeah. <laughs> I can see why you're pissed off. <laughs> no, I am shit. I shouldn't say that. Um, so it, it, it depends. And mm. it does happen. It's funny. But it only happens now in the world of Instagram. Yeah, I yeah. knew Amy Lou when she had five thousand followers. Uh -huh. Okay, oh, yeah. well, fuck, did, has that got any bearing on my what? personality whatsoever? But Here we go. Yeah. Tommy's about to. I, say, so. I knew Amy Lou when she had a thousand. <laughs> exactly, mate. I mean, any different? And then yeah. so his no, no, no difference. Like yeah. honestly, like meeting you at Charlotte's place, seeing you, like it sounds no like different. you're aligning no yourself different. a bit to it. Like, yeah. It's a bit of part of your identity. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, I've been like, hanging on it. For I mean, because the last three years, the positive bit of that is it's like. When people follow you, mm. they're backing you. So there's something exciting that people see and it's like, mm. fuck, I I, uh, I backed Emmy Lou oh. in the early days. And, and it doesn't matter if they're backing me at 1,000 mm -hmm. followers, they're backing me at 70,000. It, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. They're yeah. a part of that journey yeah. and they're a part of that success. And I think that's really important to always push that back to them. You're a part of my success, mm -hmm. you know, and then and then they, they – like it's just – I don't know. It makes you feel good, yeah. you know, um, and they understand that I'm – grateful mm. as well it's there's nothing better than someone showing you gratitude 100 percent. i think though when someone has a thousand close followers right and this is not an example on you it's like maybe a musician where it's like oh they're indie at that point right mm. we love being able to go to a small gig i think ed sheeran was the example yeah, he's absolutely. doing stadium shows yeah, yeah. from doing shitty old pubs mm -hmm. to doing stadium shows there has to be a difference and and you become something different for other people. Yeah. And so people do fall off. And I think that can rattle you, you know, like you have someone who's really tapped in in the early days and then you're like, where'd they go? Yeah. But then it's like, oh, well, maybe the, you're just not for them at that point. But, yeah, you're not serving them anymore. Mm -hmm. and, and that's okay as well, you know. Yeah. You're not for everyone uh, all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, you and it's just like friends. Like remember you had those hardcore friends mm -hmm. when you were like 20, yeah. Yeah. living at each other's house, borrowing their clothes, eating their food. You know, you're there every <laughs> yeah. day, never going to yeah. part. Mate, I don't even remember their name. <laughs> <laughs> you were stoned. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you have those friends. But, man, yeah. they were, you were tight. Yeah. yeah. And, and you were both in each other's lives and you created amazing memories. 
and then you just drift away. Yeah. And and that mm. there's I don't see that as negative as well. And, and I think that can happen with your fan base as well. Yeah. What do you like at uh, your kids' school when you go in there? Who's Emmy Lou going into that environment? Oh, I'm the worst. Uh, <laughs> school drop school drop offs for me. Yeah. I'm. I'm normally very much in work mode by mm-hmm. then, so I'm up at seven and I'm waiting. I'm waiting to like get on the phone, and especially at the moment, do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? I've really scaled that back so that I can be there to drop them off. But mm-hmm. I am. I'm on my phone mm-hmm. doing some, yeah. especially school drop, uh, school pickup. Yeah. That one I found really hard. I'm exhausted, but I've still got a good hour and a half of the working day. Mm-hmm. So you know, people don't realize that I, I am actually on the phone from eight until five five thirty. And uh, back before I sort of um, had the team and had more of a schedule, I would, you know, scheduling calls for 8.30 when the kids were in bed. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas now, you know, that is for a different time that, you know, I need to do stuff, uh, other stuff, or mm-hmm. I need to actually have some downtime. So now, you know, I kind of make those rules. Not it's it's work time between like a normal business mm-hmm. day, uh, but that can, sometimes I can pull myself up and go, all right, get your head out of your phone, mm-hmm. chuck it in your pocket, mm-hmm. pick up your kids, show up, be interested. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. I've had to pull myself up. Even this year I've had to do that. I mean, the hard thing is it's th- what, 3.30s pick up? Mm-hmm. Oh, There's still an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah. Of, you're work. rushing. Yeah. Like, and, and, and you've got two phones. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I've got one of these. <laughs> it's like your snacks are in my pocket. How like, the fuck does that work with Bluetooth connection on Her your AirPods, car? AirPods. Ta- yeah. Attached to both. Oh, it's the worst. Yeah, you've got to put one away. Otherwise, they will like they Connect. all lose. Yeah, yeah, it's the worst. Oh, it's, yeah, that's not <laughs> ideal. <laughs> you've even got because I, whenever I imagine you driving, you've got like a full decked out decal. Emmy Lou loves car. Certainly do. Yeah, I mean that's been <laughs> a dream. That? I mean, <laughs> but that's been a dream of mine with the Daily Talk Show. I think first hundred episodes we we're talking about that, and I tried to convince Tommy. <laughs> To, um, You're not rapping my Hyundai. Complete rap <laughs> yeah. of the yeah. car. I mean, what was the thinking? What was the thoughts behind that? How did you get that? Well, for me, I you know I always try and think of ways to offer value to the brands that mm-hmm. I partner up with, and you know wherever Mitsubishi came in with you know a car when I had no following, like my so my sta- my old silver bullet twenty year old <laughs> Holden station wagon, yeah. carks it. Mm-hmm. I do some stories on it. I, I think I watched funny. that story. I think yeah. it went flat and or then, something th- happened. Oh, th- Fucking whole thing blew up. And then, <laughs> that's what happened. I'm surprised you. <laughs> you don't remember that. No, you. you oh no, that, no, you left it. Left it somewhere. Yeah, I had to leave it in the middle of Middle Park, like the richest suburb. <laughs> that's where my kids go to school. So if you ask about school pickup, that's the type of memories we're creating right now. <laughs> so and then my shoe broke, oh. and so I was walking them to school from the place where it, um, it had broken down. It was just. Crazy. Anyway, Werribee Mitsubishi came in and gifted me a car and it was amazing, you know, mm. with no following, but they believed in the community. Yeah. And, mate, they have never to this day received so many emails and, and, and followers from that point on from, from any other car partnership that they've done. That's it was just so good. nuts, you know. And um, then it, they came in, you know, uh, with a car a partnership. After six months you've got to swap it over to mm-hmm. the next one and that's just part of the, yeah. how it works. So when they went to swap it over for this one, I'm like, ugh, look, can I pay for the wrapping of it? Yeah. Look, well, I'll, I'll, I'll give you some guidelines. Here's my favourite photo of me, logo, hi, Rez. Um, <laughs> yeah, PNG. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise me. Um, and <laughs> they, they, you know, wrapped it. I paid for it. Yeah. I, I um, wanted to yeah. because I thought let's offer these guys some value. You know, let's get mm. your name on it, mm-hmm. my name on it. Let's do some street team stuff. We're revving up it. the show. You know, let's yeah. let's go for gold. Do you gold. have icy cold cans of Coke in the back? <laughs> 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 no. I know, you know, I always wanted the chop milks. You know, like, yeah. you know, it used to be the chop milks. Or and, well, the Pepsi versus Coke. I loved that oh, where yeah. they would be oh. out the back and you would get like – I think it was like Mentos or something. I remember once following, uh, it was back in WA, a, a radio street team car, mm. following it for miles. <laughs> and then they pulled up and I was like crazy. I think I was a pee plater, so yeah. I was 18 or 19. And then they opened up the book and there was a pack of, a six pack of tip top hot dog rolls. <laughs> no hot dog, just the rolls. <laughs> and I was like, fuck, I'll be following you for 20K. Like, <laughs> and and I was so gutted. I never did it again after that. I worked on the street team and I remember we were in <laughs> Frankston and this guy was there. He'd come from Williamstown on the train <laughs> and he won a wheelbarrow and he took it home on the train. Oh <laughs> <my> <laughs> God. Uh, he he got a, more than you. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and that's worth of, it. That's worth yeah. the trip to Frankston. <laughs> <laughs> With a few hot dog buns in there. You're lucky in the, to have come out alive, really. <laughs> would you do an upgrade of the wrap 
I mean, say you get a, I mean, through Werribee Mazda, mm. get a nice uh, Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi. Sorry, oh, Jesus. Sorry. 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 Like, they're not, my, they're like, they're not <laughs> my sponsorship, to be honest. Yeah. Do you want a Mazda one? Was there, was I take a, a Mazda. Mitsubishi. No, Mitsubishi. Is there a great. Werribee Mazda? <laughs> no. Um, Christian Hull and you. Oh, I'd I like love that. that. I, my dream is to get us two on a poster together. How oh, cool that'd would be that great. be? Oh, How did you become it. friends with Christian? So Tanya Hennessy and I had been on stage on a panel uh, probably a month earlier and it was this not even this time last year. So we haven't even been friends a year yet. And we're at VidCon. She invited me to drinks. We're all staying at the same hotel. She invited me downstairs for drinks and I sat next to Christian and we like just yeah. started chatting like instantly. I can't imagine you guys getting along. <laughs> and we just... We were just wetting ourselves laughing and there was no pr pretentiousness. Yeah. I didn't actually know like anything about Christian at that point. But it was funny enough, I had been filming something for, for a brand and they had said, oh, we wanted to get Christian on this and it didn't happen, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, yeah, cool. And all I knew was it was a guy that they wanted on the show that had mm -hmm. a blonde wig. That was it. <laughs> and then we just hit it off. And the next day I think, you know, he messaged. And now knowing Christian and how um, he's, he's quite reserved in, in a lot of ways. Mm. And he messaged, say, hey, I'm going down for coffee if you'd like to come. And it, now knowing that, that, that's not something that he would sort of mm. go out of his way to do. And we ended up spending the day together. I dragged him to every clothing store, tried on a thousand outfits. He helped me spend a lot of money um, <laughs> and went out for lunch and that was kind of it. Mm. He's yeah. great. I, I'd love you two together on this show. Yeah. Oh. It'd be so much fun. Yeah, that would be so much fun. He is honestly, you know, obviously on, on camera mm. it's funny and yeah. we have fun and it's all yeah. natural, but off camera too – you know, being in this bottom when you were saying about the negativity from mm. people you know mm. and stuff. Uh, when I met him too, I was at that point where I was feeling quite lonely, mm. like, Jesus, you know, the profile's growing, yet I'm, you know, it, it, not being surrounded by a lot of professionals in the industry. And so his friendship came along right at a time where, you know, I'll be always so grateful for that as well because yeah. that's that's a true friend, a true mate. Yeah, and it's and it's more fun doing it with somebody else, yeah. even if it's just consulting about what you're doing and what he's doing. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, he's busy, man. Yeah. Like he sells yeah. out national tours. Him and Tanya got this killer show on the road. So we don't see each other a huge amount. So when we do, it's just bam, we're on. We don't mm. have any time for any bullshit, any insecurities. We just go for it. And I love that. I love I mean, we traveled to New York for two weeks together. And that looked amazing. Yeah. I loved oh, the so uh I love the fact that Christian walked away with the exact same uh, coloured uh, jumper as the sales guy. <laughs> yeah, I know. I made him. He was. Oh, so we're in Michael Kors, which yeah, I don't even right. say right. It's so fancy. Michael I can't Michael Kors? Say. Is that Oh, it? apparently yeah. it's Michael Kors. I like Kors. Um, I'm going with that. Yeah, and yeah. I, I spent enough money in there. <laughs> yeah, you can call it the whatever the hell I want. <laughs> um, and so we were in there and I just turned into this absolute Soho. And you, I don't know. You know sometimes when you go into a store, I do it when I go into hippie stores, all yeah. of a sudden you think you're boho. <laughs> you're buying like, you know, everything. You're buying yeah. all the dresses. Yeah. You yeah. never Since, wear them again because yeah. you get in it. Like just Seminyak in Bali. Yeah, just yeah, getting you, a bit of the Yeah, few and then incense. all of a sudden you're just you're in it and you buy everything. Well, yeah. that was me. Um, and he was just like, who is this person right now? <laughs> and um, and then I said, can you just try on like a couple of bits and pieces? Come on. Mm -hmm. They brought out the champagne. And yeah, like, oh, really? Yeah, oh, yeah. No, the they fruit, went. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he was just sitting there on his phone. And I said, try on, try on the fucking jumper. I'll buy you the yeah, jumper. Yeah. And then he tried on. He goes, oh, I like this. And he goes, it's $200. I'm like, yeah, it's cheap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're Get in it. New York. I know. And then, he, But he looked fantastic yeah it looked great and he loves it he yeah. wears it to death yeah i mean what's the um what's your thoughts on faking it till you make it uh to a certain extent mm. uh definitely so going back to the question about what i'm like at the school pickup you know mm. what you know that uh, i remember really having that shift in my mentality around three years ago where i thought right Every day, I rock, and I'd just been rejected from a reality TV show, so I was down, mm. real down mm. at that point. And I thought, Jesus, and I hadn't even really been going for that long. Yeah. And I had this real shift, and I thought, Nah, this is it. I'm showing up every single day. Every day, I'm getting up, hair, makeup. I'm like, it's like I'm walking into an interview every single day, and that's what I started doing. And for me, that was that shift. And that is for me like faking it to you make it. Mm. I don't think you can fake it about your skill set. You yeah. have to be honest with that. Yeah. If you aren't a TV presenter yet, that's okay. I'm I'm working towards being a TV presenter. Or you know what It's you like can... acting like Oprah is how I feel. Like I mean, even the energy that you bring in, like mm. you you yeah, you do have an energy. You come into the to the room, you bring an energy, you you know, you come through the door. I think that there's 
there's something because that's real, even though you might be that's faking. Person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So you know, you can do little things like you know how how you're going to present yourself to the world every mm-hmm. day, how you're going to speak. How does your voicemail sound to people? What's your email like? You know, like all those kind of things. And I'm still working on my email. What is your voicemail greeting, by the way? Can oh, you do it for us like, live on it? I had to change it because okay. I sounded like I was 12. Okay. Hi, you've called Emmy Lou. I can't come to the phone right now. That's how it used to be. It was uh, Now it's like, <laughs> hi, you've reached Emmy Lou. Like it's like yeah. full badass. You know you can A, B test having two phones. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Which one works better? <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. I mean, what, the, the phone thing I find very interesting because – it's sort of uh, the vision of someone on the phone, wheeling and dealing, all that sort of thing. What the fuck are you doing on the phone? That's what I'm curious about. <laughs> well, look, it's not actually as fancy as what you think. So I <laughs> I got the second phone because I was going to the Logies last year mm-hmm. and I was filming everything on my phone and I thought my older phone was playing up and I was like, fuck, it's Logies. It's, yeah. you know, I'd hashtag that dream for three years yeah. and I was like, there is no way that phone is going to be <laughs> yeah, my yeah. end. You Absolutely. know what I mean? And mm. so I got the second phone with that and then um, I found out that, you know, my kids love YouTube and so now it's this amazing <laughs> cafe tool that I use yeah, when yeah. I go out and they're going crazy. But what I didn't do well was uh, separate the numbers. So now I just call anyone from any phone. Mm. They, you know, sometimes it's kind of good because they don't have my other phone. Yeah, so they right. haven't picked up to my other phone. I'll call them. I'm, I'm going to fuck you up right now. <laughs> and they pick it up. Who's this? It's Emmy Lou, it's, the person who yeah. just called you from her other phone. <laughs> what you doing, mate? It's <laughs> so good. Are you doing debt collecting? What's going on? <laughs> but now it is really good to, to film. Um, so when I'm on an Insta Live, I'll have one particular phone yeah. and I can show them stuff we can scroll together, which I yeah. really enjoy. Mm. You know, I can just show them something on the other phone straight away and yeah, that's like just this. kind of fun. It's an indulgent I want to be able to scroll together. I like <laughs> yeah. that idea. you just be on the dual swap. Yeah, but it just makes things so... <laughs> Like you could, because you can film your phone. Yeah, and and so I also do. I love doing this, and it's so stupid. But that's it's not I guess, stupid. I guess it's how connected I feel with the yeah. lives as well. I'll do a story and go, "Hey guys, we're on the live. Everyone wave and like all <laughs> all little we'll do the wave for you emoji." <laughs> that is like, so cool. And it's because you're actually really in it. Do you know yeah. what I mean? We did the um the photo shoot from the hotel room the other day, and we went live for that. And uh, it was, cra- you know, there was so many hundreds of people on it and um, we were actually shooting live and mm-hmm. people just felt so, like, they mm. were just loving it. And I felt really rude. So mm. I kept coming back to the phone going, I'm so sorry, guys. You know, I'm in the middle of a shoot. I've got to yeah. shoot. I'm like, I'll just go do this and I'll come back and what do you think? And, you know, the the live eventually went for the hour and ran out. But so many of the gorgeous community members were saying, don't worry about us. We're fine. We're happy to watch you. Just go go do your work. We'll watch you. And um, you you could hear me say in the background, oh, I'm really, like, I feel a bit rude. Hang on, let's just talk to them for, you know, I can't. Mm. And, you know, re- reality probably says that I should have just turned off the live and worked. But you know what? It's my clothes. It's my shoot. Yeah, whatever the hell exactly. I want. You so, you, so you're replying to 150 DMs, you know, sometimes. And these are people, right? And maybe they're, you know them or you don't know them. How do you, how do you work out who's your friend mm. at that point when you're replying to? Because a lot of people, I think, a lot of people that don't have a following mm. is replying to mum, uh, yeah. their auntie, yeah. you know, Jeff. Well, n- none of them. I mean, I'll know if I'm replying to someone who's actually a personal friend of mine. So those 150, 200 a day are all community members. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So they're D- not. Does it blur the line? Does it confuse you about friendship? Because I know I think it would confuse you, Josh. Yeah, I couldn't. I but mean, no, I think you're clearer now about your, like, because some people just can't handle having a whole heap of friends. Yeah. Like I think for me, yeah. I, I've got a lot of acquaintances that I've, you know, been friends with for years mm-hmm. and I just I assume the friendship when I see them. It's mm-hmm. not like we might not hang out all the time. Mm-hmm. But then I feel like I'm Josh probably is, more like Christian how like yeah. Christian and I are friends and I feel like that him and I, the way that we talk yeah. is very similar, which is like there's like a reserved part of it, which is like, well, like just not needing that many friends. Maybe yeah, that's so part of it. I don't have a lot of close friends, mm-hmm. you know. Um, uh, you know, I have my core people and friends that I've been, you know, friends with for, for over a decade or since mm-hmm. I was a kid. Um, I don't have a huge amount around me. I don't need that. I yeah. love, you know, being alone. Uh, that's something that, you know, in times when you're maybe mentally not not all um, – not at your best, at mm-hmm. your peak. Sometimes being alone can be, you know, not nice and it can feel really lonely. But for majority of my life, being alone is, is quite okay with me. Yeah. So that doesn't worry me too much. And, you know, they are um, part of the community. So mm-hmm. th- I do really see them as that mm-hmm. as well. And I will always care about them and they'll always come first in these decisions 
that I make, you know, mm-hmm. a, around the Emmy Lou Loves brand. But yeah. then when we get home and I'm sitting there alone, you know, that's my time and I really value it as well. And and no one will ever Im- infiltrate that. Do you mm. think people blur the lines? You think about yeah. Tom Cruise and uh, these huge celebrities. You think you know them. You rock up. And so you, they've built a, a career out of having rapport with the person watching. And so then sometimes if you did bump into them, you know. Oh. oh, yeah, it happens all the time, yeah. and um, and and that is hard because people will come up and and want to give you a hug straight mm-hmm. away, and but they'll not most of the time will stop you and, yeah. and stop themselves and go, oh my god, I just realised you don't know who I am, and I'm like, that's cool, that's cool, <laughs> yeah, it happens yeah. all the time, and uh, uh-huh. you know, my I think my goal in those situations is always to make them feel comfortable because a lot of a lot of the time they're kind of shaking a little bit or yeah, a little yeah. bit nervy or they're, they're just a little, it's, I wouldn't say they're starstruck. I yeah, think yeah. it's more that it's surreal. You they're know what it's like when, it. when you see someone on TV, mm. mm-hmm. you think, God, I know them from somewhere. Mm. You know, you don't always yeah, yeah. think, oh my God, that's that person. You yeah, think, yeah. ah, Jesus, I know him. Did I go home with him? Well, you've built it. When I was 20. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, because you've built a rapport yeah. through yeah. your content. Mm. And so they're in the moment trying to understand what it all fucking means because you've emulated a, f- a friendship. Yeah, mm, and mm. so you can't just go throwing that back in their face. Mm. Well, you have to understand that. that mm. If that's you and your brand and who you are and who you show up to, well, then fucking show up to yeah, it every yeah. day. So if someone comes up to you and, oh, my God, you know, like, how are you going? How's the kids? Hi, Sage. Mm-hmm. You know, the kids don't always understand it. That's yeah, fine. Yeah. And they, they don't need to. But with mm. me, I can understand and that's fine. I just um, – I, and I always make the rule and, and all of the – all of the tribe know that I have one rule. If I'm yelling at my kids or in the middle of a Barney with Aaron, do not come up and introduce yourself because you will get in the way and you will get injured. Um, you know, because, you know, I, I'm someone who, you know, I'll, if my kids are fucking running amok, I'm going to tell them. Or yeah. if, you know, have we all had Barneys in public? Well, I don't know. Mm, I have. Yeah. And so if, if it's one of those real personal yeah. situations, sure. don't come up and not right now. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like maybe screenshot it and send it to me later. <laughs> yeah. Do you get a bit of that? Do you get people to like... Uh, the weird, like taking a photo of you and then nah, sending it. Nah, they'll come up, like, and okay, I'm great. super proud that that's how they feel. Yeah, I'm yeah. super, super proud that um, I give off the impression that you can come up and say, "Yeah, it's nice. Fuck, that's what I want, mate. I want yeah. you to have that because con- I've I've felt it when I've had to uh, either introduce myself to someone, especially back in the early years, and say, "Hey, you know," or, or just. I'd love to interview you or something and you get mm-hmm. the shakes and you feel all nervous and, and you don't get the real nice friendly mm-hmm. and you're like, oh, Jesus, you're nothing yeah. like your Instagram, you know, yeah. and that oh, mm-hmm. that can feel really soul destroying. And I'm so proud that, um, you know, these people don't feel like that with mm-hmm. me. They can come up and say hi. And and I feel comfortable enough to go, hey, how are you going? Oh, my God, yeah. I am running late for, you know, school pickup. i got to go, but it's so lovely to meet you. Do you want to grab a photo quickly? i got to go. Like, yeah. you know, and mm-hmm. it's. That's yeah. fine. Is it is it what you sign up for when you start an account and you build a community? Like is because I yeah I, I had this um we were speaking to someone an author once and I asked him a question about his book and he kind of was like a bit annoyed that I'd asked him. He's like, how would I know? I was like, you wrote the fucking book and I want to know what happened at the like yeah, after yeah. the fact. Yeah. And he was like a bit annoyed that I'd asked about like, you know, what had happened since you wrote it and the thing. Yeah. I was like, that's what you kind of, as a creative, mm. you put that out into the world. Like how can we, why wouldn't I have this conversation? It becomes a shared story in some yeah, regards, yeah. doesn't it? I, I think it depends. I think it, it depends. I don't think necessarily if you start a, commu- uh, a well, a profile online mm-hmm. that you are necessarily signing up for for that. Yeah. Um, and that's okay. I uh, You know, if you're a personal person but you're sharing, I don't know, um, organising tips but you don't really want to be out there I think there's ways that you can still generate that content still share it still show up uh and and not have to have that big public profile if you don't want to it, mm. it is all in the way that you act and and so I guess it is all in the way of people's perceptions of you as mm. well mm. um but yeah I, it I have signed up for that because that's what I want and I make it very clear yeah what's well, you know, conducive I, to your personality I think right like, who's I mean some sort of US UFC fighter that would punch your head in, you probably don't want to approach him yeah. as much as you like who he is. You know, yeah, like no, you take a selfie from far away yeah, 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 with them yeah. in the background. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, where do you get your inspiration from? How do you sort of have the thoughts that you do around what you want to do? Oh, that's that's a good one. It it really depends on where I'm at. So, like we were saying right at the beginning, mm. it starts with uh, maybe like a purpose, what I think I can do, what I think I'm good at. What will make me happy? It definitely is always that will be inspiring. Nowadays, it it, it 
does stem around what I um, what I feel from mm-hmm. the community as well and what I feel is, is right for where I'm headed as well. And I make that really clear so that we're never under – under the impression like, oh, she's doing it for us. No, no, no. It's st- I'm mm-hmm. still, you know, I'm still following my dreams. I'm just sharing it with you. So mm-hmm. maybe you're going to pluck that out and use that for yourself and grab that little piece of, you know, golden nugget mm-hmm. and, and do it. So I think it's always about um, being inspired by by what you want and then from there that's where it becomes mm-hmm. that contagious, yeah. you know, because you're not, you're not pointing the finger going, you should be inspired, you should do it like this. I'm just showing up every day. Yeah. Do you feel happy? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'm stoked. Has that been always the case or is that something that you've had to learn? No, you know, I personally feel, and this is, it might be right or wrong, it, it, I don't think there is a right or wrong answer, but for me happiness is definitely a discipline, you know, and mm. that's coming from, you know, I'm a suicide survivor and, uh, you know, I've been to that basement of hell and that doesn't, you don't just try, you know, you don't just come to a point where you think, okay, my life isn't worth living. You don't come from that and then bounce mm. straight back up. People, mm. A lot of people think that and that's where we, I think it can get dangerous. Yeah. Oh, you've hit rock bottom. You'll be fine now. Mm. No, fucking no. you got three more rock bottoms to go. Yeah. You know, so I, I happiness takes a long time sometimes, mm. you know, and sometimes you're really lucky and it, and it doesn't. But if you're one of those people that you are going up and down, the, the real key to that is to not be afraid of the downs. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like that... I think that's where a lot of that can come from, a lot of the darkness and the thoughts can come from because you get scared, you're down, you're like, Mm. I'm scared, I'm down, that's it, that's the end for me. But if we can start to understand, actually, this is when you're at your most bravest Mm. because you're going to work through this. And if we can start to look back and go, shit, I was at a place, you know, that it was was so down and I was so dark, yet I just managed to get up and have a shower that day Mm. or I just managed to, to get out that day. Rather than seeing that um, as as a bad thing, can we see it as, wow, that was a real act of courage. I am one brave motherfucker, Mm. you know, and then all of a sudden we start to see all of these little acts of courage and bravery that we do, whether it's trying a new hairstyle, whether it's sitting in the shower and crying, reaching out for some help, saying, hey, you know what, I'm not super happy in this relationship or I want a, I want a career in TV presenting. All of these things are, are tiny little acts of courage and I always say this and that's what builds that foundation for, for your confidence mm. on, on who you are. Can you identify when a high becomes so high that it goes into that sort of manic state or like because I know that I sometimes feel so happy and then I sort of start checking myself of like, oh, I've identified that when I normally have these big highs, it's then yeah. going to have that crash. Yeah, I, you know, I think it. I think you do. That's a really good word. Identify mm. it, and it takes practice, though. Mm. You know, like like mm. anything, right? It just takes practice. It's a muscle. Your personality, your courage, your confidence, who you are. That's a bloody muscle. And mm. you know, I'm 40 years old. I just turned 40 years old. So you know. I spent years identifying what that is. And sometimes it can be an event, Mm -hmm. it can be a trauma, it can be substance abuse. Like Mm -hmm. there's so many things that will either create that high or create that crash. Mm -hmm. And and as you get older and you get a clearer head and, you know, obviously I joke about substance abuse but it's such a a far gone thing Mm -hmm. for me, right? So with a clear head you start to realise that for me it's events and it's it's those big highs Mm -hmm. that, yeah, can lead to those lows. Now, are those lows a bad thing? Mm -hmm. No. You know what? It's just your body and your mind saying you need to rest now. You've just had a killer week. That was amazing. You were on stage in front of 2,000 people. You need to have a little a little rest. Now, you know, 10 years ago, that little rest for me was the definition of, oh, I'm low. Mm. I'm, I'm not doing too good, you know, whereas now it's mm. like, no, no, you, you just need to recoup and rejuvenate. How does that fit within the context of a content strategy? How do, you, how do we strategize so that when we're, in a low mm. that we can actually give ourselves that time while still um, giving our community what they need? Well, you you got to take care of yourself first. You know, you're, you're no good to your community if you are pouring from an empty cup or if you are sharing out stuff that, again, is, is slightly getting more onto the selfish side. Do you know what I mean? So you need to just take stock for a second and your community will be there waiting for you. No one is going anywhere. You know, we, we need to remember that. No mm. one's going anywhere. We're all there. So I think for me it really depends on the type of content you're used to pushing out. But for me, obviously, my stuff is all real every everyday stuff. I don't pre-record something and post it up later unless it's actually mm. a produced video that we know has been done. Uh, so for me, 
I just won't do stories. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or I'll get on there and go, Jesus, I am feeling low today. I'm out. Mm. I'm taking a nap. Going to eat a block of chocolate. I'm out. <laughs> You know, I'm happy to say that I feel good. Or I feel better already because yeah, I've yeah. just shared it. But other people, it might be that they do have that strategy and they've got a bit of content up their sleeve. Mm. Pop that on. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like put something on that you, you know, a, a, I don't know, a little IG tutorial that you made that you didn't think that was that good. Mm. If you're feeling the pressure and you need to post, chuck it up. Might not be your best work, but you mm. never know. Yeah, it might go crazy. I feel like it's hard to hide in these positions. We do a podcast every day. You're on IG TV, mm. into story all over the place. It's like. But what I found is I, I would think that not being able to hide because doing something like this would mean that you'd be showing it. I think it's actually increased a, a consistency mm. in we have you, to manage, Josh, we have to and me. It. And yeah. so, but yeah, because yeah. we're forced to go, we're going to show up today, we're going to do this thing. Yeah. We're not going to be assholes. Well, it's putting the makeup on. Into, like, yeah. That's our version yeah, of that, is, right? Which is. is like getting out the front door and doing it. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it's sometimes because – you can then through that momentum actually get out so that low isn't as big because you're actually exactly you know, and being consistency. Productive. I love that. That you know, I talk about that a lot. Can, you know, we're not always inspired and we're certainly not always motivated. Or happy. But exactly. Mm -hmm. But the consistency, you don't have to be inspired yeah. or motivated to get out there and go for your daily walk or do the daily talk show. You mm. just gotta get out there and do it daily. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And sometimes when you push yourself at that point and go, hey, it's not going to be the best, but I'm going to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Those are those real moments of growth. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. Yeah. I think it's uh, Seth Godin talks about uh, authenticity being uh, overrated in regards to a pilot is an authentic. He or she are going to fly the plane whether they're feeling happy or sad. Yeah. And I guess what we're doing is it's it's the exact same way. Like we can be authentic, but we can also show up you know, each and every day and find something in that cup yeah, as well. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. you know, that is authentic in itself as mm, well, right? Yeah. We're not, yeah. I just, I love that you brought that up because mm. it really, I talk a lot about, um, I used to talk a lot about it when I first started was that really finding the joy of the 90% of living. So, you know, you got your 100% and you did 10% is the glossy magazine cover, mm -hmm. the TV show, this mm. part, yeah. this part is the 10%. The 90% is you making all of this cladding mm. behind us, you know, mm. like getting the shirts made, you know, having to save up the money to get the merch, mm. all of those kind of things, having the awkward conversations with your parents. We borrowed it off your mum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got a 10 grand loan too. <laughs> you know, that, that's the 90%. And for a while there, that mm. 90% really sucked for me oh, yeah. because I was yeah. like, God, but then something hit me and it was when I was auditioning. I, Again, it was straight after I'd had that um, sort of knockback from the reality mm. TV and I was going for the, the first audition since that knockback. Now, something hit me just before I went in. I was like, fuck, I'm auditioning, which means I'm actually living my dream right now mm. because 90% of what you do is audition, mm. you know. And so then it, it, it switched for me right, right then and there. It completely switched. And that's when the showing up every day, right, I'm in. Every day is an audition. I'm, I'm just there. And this 90% is joyous and I'm grateful to be living it. Well, it's part of the show. It's part of the, the whole thing, right? Can't like, get the 10% without the 90%. Yeah. Doesn't happen. Yeah, I, I remember the joy of um, I always push back on doing my washing and shit like that. <laughs> and I just had a moment of like doing my washing and being present in that moment and being yeah. like, actually, this is like the bit that makes me like a huge, like we can have all the big dreams in the world, but if we, we're not fucking washing our socks, then yeah. we're, not, mm. we're not serving that 90% as well. Exactly. And it mm. comes back to, you know, that gratitude, you know, and sometimes we all get swept up and we're like, mm. oh, my God, life is so hard and yeah. we've had a few knocks and things have happened, the bills have come in or whatever, mm. and you're sitting there going, woe is me. But if you can scale it back for a second and just be grateful for something simple, mine's always clean water and hot running water, mm. warm home, like those, and that makes me smile instantly, mm. smile, like straight away. And I've always had that one for some reason. And I remember thinking it when I was like 21, yeah. thinking, oh, my God, I've got clean water. I think my dad's from uh, Kenya and my mum's from Vietnam. So I've always heard those stories of, you know, not having those things so accessible. Mm. Uh, and so something like that will just snowball into you thinking about other things that you're grateful for, big or small, and they kind of get bigger and you realise, mm. wow, shit, it's all right. Yeah. We're okay. Amy Lou, you are inspiring. <laughs> uh, I know that Tommy and I are constantly yeah. – 
referencing you when we <laughs> when we see yeah. you, you know what could be possible. I think you're the poster girl of picking yourself. You've mm. created everything by picking up the phone. Now you just got two of them. Yeah. <laughs> but you've you've decided I'm going to do this, yeah. and it's going to yeah. be me deciding to do it and making it happen. Yeah, it's cool. Oh, that's really so cool. cool. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for being on the Daily Talk Show. Uh, hi at the Daily Talk Show com is the email address if you want to send us an email. If you enjoyed the show, take a screen grab, share it on Instagram. Yep. Also tag up Emmy Lou as well. <laughs> EmmyLouLoves.com is the website. Is yep. that right? And uh, you can get all the dresses. I know like that photo shoot that you were doing, is that a on whole Monday. new range? Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, it's a whole new collection. It's it's insane. It's, it's so beautiful. Amazing. Yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> definitely check that out too. Uh, otherwise, we'll see you tomorrow, guys. See you guys. Thank you.